how to cheat at Windows games, which is something that a lot of kids know, and I didn't know, and now I know this is a cool way to do it. I've studied this before. So they have a game here. All right, gametime.exe, that pretty much gives you a clue that this is a Windows program. If you run file on it, let me first get rid of this. I don't need Linux. Um, okay, if I do here, and this is Seesaw, okay. Whoa, you didn't see the what did I do wrong? You didn't, do, you didn't see the oh, that'll do it, okay. Thank you, all right. Now, all right, so now if I do file of game time, it is a PE32, 32-bit Windows. All right, so it'll run on any version of Windows, and I'm using my Windows 2008 machine because, aha, there's winning, which you'll see. We'll get back there. All right. So, um, if I bring in game time, which I have right here, I can run it. And here's the game, Tap Tap Revolution. The game is starting. And it's, it says, when you see an S, press space. And you see the X, press X. And I failed because it gives you about one tenth of a second to respond and then it kicks you out. So I just want to lengthen that time. And so what I did was put it in Ollie Debug. Ollie Debug is the Windows debugger and this turns out to be fantastic. Um, because in Ollie Debug, you see the assembly code here, you see the stack and other things, and you can run things. If I do function F9, it will just run. But what's better is to do function F8. So that will run forward jumping over subroutines, which means it goes into subroutines. So let me just run this a bit. Um, there, if I hold down F8, it will start running the game. Notice it has opened a window here. So you can move that to the side so you can see it as you proceed. So it's running the game. If I run function F8, it will go quickly through the game. So there, it's starting to print things over there. And I can see the flow control on the left. Notice it printed something, key is not. It's going to keep on printing key frequently, but almost always it's key is not, just to waste your time and frustrate you. <coughs> but eventually, when you solve the game far enough, it'll print the key. So I run this. It's printing up stuff on the right. There goes key is not. And then more zombs, tap, tap, revolution, and on it goes. And you can see the flow control on the left as it's going through loops, looping back and forth. So the point is, by playing the game a couple times, I understand what's going on is it's going to advertise stuff and then have a tutorial and then the critical part of the game is where it prints dots across the screen which is coming up game is starting soon 10 9 there's some kind of counter going on here and after you do it the first time you can put in breakpoints and then run to the breakpoints which is what I eventually did but the point is uh, when it's starting Okay. Here's another loop. By the way, you can sometimes spot, yeah, watch ESI over on the right. The ESI, you can watch it counting down. Now it's 13. Almost every loop works that way. It'll be ESI or EDI or something. Watch it. Now ESI is 13. Now it's 6. Now it's 5. I'll stop it next time. There's ESI 13 at this spot. But when you get down here, there, ESI is 4 over here. You can watch the loop count down. There's almost always, every loop is like this. There's a counter counting down one. And this is it's fairly common that there's three or four little sub loops involved. That's what's making these get ready, get ready, get ready. That's the countdown. And all right, let me press F8 some more. You can see ESI goes down to three. And then down to two and down to one. So when ESI is zero, it's going to break out of the loop and then start printing the next section of the game. Prints key is not something. And then, <coughs> prints that junk again. Okay, now it's going to print. So when you see an S, press S, key is not again. And at some point, it's going to print a series of dots leading up to where I have to press the key in like one-tenth of a second. So you have to press space bar first. Right, space bar is what you're supposed to say after you see yes. So this is Ken counting down someplace. Yeah, there's ESI 1, 
here is going to be ESI 0. There are the dots. These dots, some random number of dots appear, and then an S, and you have to respond. So first, I found a sleep command in here that had a parameter, and I just made it much longer, and that slowed down the dots, but it didn't slow down the part where you have to answer. So that was not productive. And um, anyway, let me, uh, in fact, yeah, here's the sleep. So let me just show you how you do this because this is fantastic. If you want to do it inside Ollie, you can, here is the sleep command, sleep. And it tells you, you know, over here, timeout is 20 milliseconds. So here's the parameter, 14. I can right click binary edit. And I can change that to like FF. And when I save it with OK, it's going to tell me now it is 65 seconds. So that's too long. So I can go back and edit it here and um, make it like 0F and see how that looks. And that's three seconds, so that's pretty good. So what I really did, now you can continue to run it inside Ollie, but Ollie is kind of slow and irritating. So what I found the way to do this, if I want to make that version of the game, all I do is find this pattern of bytes. It used to be 68140000. You can modify it right in your raw file. That's what I did here. I made a copy of game time, and then I edit that with a hex editor. I just use H for hex fiend. Now, this is the Windows binary in a Mac hex editor, and now I just find and replace that series of bytes. So, I can see them up there, so I do find hex, it's 68, Zero, uh, 14 zero, zero, 0 That is this one command that pushes the, the quantity up there. And if I'm lucky, that'll only happen once. Added I added the 0F. Oh, yeah. The original was 14 zero, zero, zero. That was 20 milliseconds. So now if I do next, it finds one of them. And I notice I'm on line 2212. If I do next again, it finds another one here. So there are two of them. So I might have to guess which one to change. But anyway, I know if I change that byte to 0F, it will get faster. And so here, you change this thing to editing mode, into overwrite mode here, because I don't want to add bytes and screw up the file. I just want to change bytes in the file. And um, there, 1400 zero, zero F. There. That's one byte is what I've changed. Now I save that file and quit. And now when I go back to Windows, I can shrink this down and take my modified program here and here it is and if I run this program um, I think you, uh, did I break it? Select I didn't select over. That'll do it. I thank you. That's not the wrong way to do it. Alright, let's get rid of this one. Thank you. Good. Let me try it again. But I've never, there, I think there were like better programs optimized for cheating on games. But um, now I have, I closed all the last 14, 0, 0. I wonder how many of those there are. I remember that part. 14, 0, 0, 0. 68? 68, good, I'm glad you remember. Good. So let's find, in fact, let's just replace them both. This is brutal, 68. Okay, I'm going to make it bigger. 68, 14, 0, F, 0, 0. There. I'm just going to replace all. Did it do it? All right, let's see if I can find any of them. Well, it might have done it. I'm going to save it and see what I just did. What's that? Change the find to 0. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Change the find to 0, F, and C. Good, good. I should find two of them now. Next. I'm not finding anything. Oh, all right. Oh, I have a zero there. Oh, good, good. I'm glad you people are paying attention. All right, good, good. So, there, finally. There's one, and there's the other. Okay, I think it looks pretty good. Let's save it. Close it. Let's see if this one runs. And I'm going to replace it. would be fine if I could only do that. Move and replace. Run. Okay. And now, it runs. But when it gets to the dots, they should move really slowly. 
Yeah. Now it's like six seconds between dots or something. Um, all right. Anyway, so this did not work, but I found another one. There was a counter in another. So the other part was harder to find. I'm not going to demonstrate it. So it's the part after the S. I, now I let it go by holding down F8 and then F7 until I got to where it printed the S. And then I watched after that, and there was a loop and another loop outside it and a hard-coded number of how many times to run this loop pulling the keyboard to see if you print the S. And I increased that by a lot to where it was like 60 seconds to respond to each one. Yeah. How do you, um, or can you, uh, so you, you didn't add input while you were running all the debug. You just made it easier to Right, and in principle I could have. I could have print F9, press F9 to get it running, and then go to the window and play the game. You can do that, and the whole thing will run slower just for me and the debugger, but what I thought, I found cleaner was to just modify the binary and play the game directly outside the debugger. And of course, you have to get a bunch of these right, and I made it so you have plenty of time to get them right, and then you can win the game. So it's a, a general technique to defeat these things that works pretty well. And I'd never tried that before playing a game while running it in all debug, and I thought that was pretty cool. So then eventually it prints out the flag. And then, as often happens in these CTFs where they have multiple contributors, the flag is totally not in the right format, and it's called a key, and has parentheses, and you have to try like many different forms of it before it'll tell you you're right. So I seriously thought I was wrong and spent a lot of time trying to find something else because even though it was right, it wouldn't enter the scoreboard in any reasonable way. Yeah? Did that file work on a very old operating system, the slower processor? Yeah, we'll do it now. No, uh, I don't, I don't no, know. No, I mean, the, uh, why, yeah. the slower processor is slower clustering. It might, but, I, but I, I don't think it would really do you any good. Not, not based on Because, you know, it's, it pulls the, the yeah, key press. How, how fast does it run? How, what's it based on? Real time or a clock speed or what? Uh, the sleep is based on real time. Okay. And that's what, what the part where it determined, the part that actually matters was how many times it pulls the key press. Mm -hmm. And I think if you ran it on a slower processor. It's based on clock time, not clock Yeah, you might have more time there. That might be an option. I know, I know it's based on clock rate or clock time. Yeah, anyway, that might do it. Anyway, I'm going to quit this one and we'll see what you folks have. Um, this is 140 game time.